So hello everyone, uh, this is Carlos Chidia from Goma Scientific and uh, today I will uh, demonstrate in details uh, my super story which is uh, the what we call in, in the simulation uh, community, this is a simulation medical. Uh, Gomar has always been uh, thinking about uh, higher and higher infidelity simulators. Uh, we wanted to come closest uh, to uh, human reality. Uh, so we've added lots of physiological and pathological functions, which we're going to see in detail shortly, but also, most importantly, a totally featherless and wireless simulator. So look at this. This is this is uh, this is the simulator. I'm holding it in my hand. No wires, no cables, nothing attached. It's all built in the simulator, and it's controlled by a mobile phone. So as you can see, this is the mobile phone that I'm screening. I'm, I'm sharing my screen with. So uh, it's it's really a super user friendly. Though it's it's super high fidelity, but it's very user friendly. You can use your mobile phone to control it. You can use a laptop. So it, it's very versatile and uh, it really a lots of a lots of functions have been put in the simulator. And it's good also uh, for uh, yeah, of course this is a critical care level uh, simulator. So it's used for neonatal ICU trainings. It's used for neonatal transportation training. So many times we face problems. Uh, in the rural areas where uh, newborns are born with distress, rather uh, whether they're respiratory or cardiac, so uh, these uh, newborns have to be transported into major hospitals with proper NICU service, but the transportation process sometimes is critical and really you need to, to well train uh, staff and uh, transportation staff and the ambulance, well-equipped ambulances to transport this newborn uh, from point A to point B. And this simulator is perfectly designed for this because as I showed you, it is 100% uh, wireless and it has all the, um, all the features uh, that allow you to train for uh, life support, critical care, mechanical ventilation, uh, which we'll see one by one. It also has lots of skilled trainers uh, too. So, uh, Super Tori uh, comes uh, also in different skin tones. So we have medium, lighter, and darker. And this is uh, also to add fidelity and to cater the needs for um, all kinds of our customers uh, all over the world. <laughs> so now uh, I need you to follow my my screen. So uh, this is uh, the controller. We call it Omni Two. And this controller here, as you see, is a um, universal controller, so you can control all kinds of GOMART simulators from this using your mobile phone again. So with, with your mobile phone, you could connect to Bluetooth to the simulator and, of course, connect to a virtual monitor. But here I insisted not to show virtual monitors because most of you know uh, the GOMAT virtual monitor or any virtual monitor. It's like a computer screen that has all the vital signs. But here I wanted to insist that with this simulator, you can use 100% real equipment. Uh, so whatever I can simulate here, the oxygen saturation, for example, I could measure it with a real uh, a saturometer or SpO2 sensor from the uh, right arm and from the uh, right leg, okay? I can have, I can measure the real, uh, the blood pressure um, from uh, the uh, right arm here. Also, I can place a real blood pressure cuff, an IVP cuff, automatic cuff, and it will measure the uh, blood pressure. I could uh, use, uh, the six lead ECG is, is used. Um, the six lead ECG can be used to uh, measure the blood pressure. Uh, sorry, um, uh, the, the ECG is the uh, leads are used to measure activity, uh, and uh, you could use um, a real ECG for this. You can also defibrillate using a real defibrillator, you can do pacemaking. Uh, also um, by, by using this uh, simulator. 
Okay, so uh, what else we can use? We can use a real capnometer because this simulator can exhale um, real measurable CO2, so you can control him to exhale uh, high level CO2 or low level CO2 or even the normal uh, CO2 just because ETCO2 is a gold standard in mechanical ventilation, so you can do all of these measurements using real devices. Of course, the top device you can use a medical device you can use with this simulator is the ventilator. So uh, going through his uh, upper airways, which are 3D printed airways, highly realistic, um, you could intubate the patient and connect him to mechanical, real mechanical ventilator. Uh, there is a built-in lung simulator, which I will be talking in details uh, when I move to the software. This built-in lung simulator will enable you to either to simulate normal lung functions or even pathological lung functions using a real mechanical ventilator, which will show us the pressures, volumes. So uh, no need for a simulated um, mechanical ventilator, you just use the real one. Okay, so if, if, I, if I need to go uh, through the functions one by one, I would choose to go um, from uh, uh, cephalic down. So the uh, intracranial pressure is the first one. This is uh, a value that is reflected on the virtual monitor. The ICP autoregulation also. Uh, the blink uh, is it's also uh, reflected in the um, virtual monitor. Then you have the eye state. So this is the blinking here. And uh, you can program it to blink or keep the eyes open or, or closed, as uh, you see here. Then the muscle tone, so here I put him on active, so as you see, he can move all four arms and legs, okay? He, he also can uh, breathe and uh, have uh, uh, like the mouth moving also, we will see this. Uh, but the other features you can do, and uh, you could have him reduce uh, uh, arm and leg movement uh, if you want to simulate a lower upper score, because, you know, movement and upper scoring is, is very important. The baby is really active or limp or uh, jittery. Uh, you can stimulate also seizures with all extremities or with one of the um, extremities. Uh, let's say so. This is a jittery. So uh, if I if I would show you the, the jittery, okay. So this is how he's doing, and you can go seizures with with all extremities, okay. Okay, it's a repetitive movement. And also, you can just go back to normal and active baby. Okay, so uh, for this, and now we go to the skin appearance. You have the option of the triggering jaundice, cyanosis, paleness, and redness. So you can just select which um, skin color you need to show uh, the intensity, select the intensity, and click on apply. And then, as you would see, it's, it's not only central, but it's also peripheral. I have a lot of light here, but I, I wish you could see. I will just increase the intensity, uh, so maybe you could see uh, better on the uh, skin. So it's it's clear to me, but uh, yeah, maybe with the camera it won't be clear to everyone. Okay, so I'm going back to normal. And then you have uh, to assess the volumia, uh, or to, uh, as part of the physical examination of the newborn, you need to assess the uh, fontanelles, okay? So I will I will show you here the fontanelles, so you can see. And now, if I click on bulging and apply now, you will see that the fontanelle will bulge, okay? So here you saw that the fontanelle has bulged, or I can do something fontanelles, okay? So this is uh, very important with the supertory. Um, mouth movement, it's relaxed, so I can put on active and click yes, so now you can see that the mouth uh, will be moving. Uh, the mouth movement will also help us with, uh, you know, if it's relaxed, it will help us with the anesthesia process, uh, so you can check the jaw thrust and trismus on, on the simulator. Um, uh, also, um, you can uh, you can have him uh, like uh, uh, simulate air hunger. It's uh, also important when I trigger the air hunger, you will see how his uh, breathing would, would, would change. Okay. 
So then I would go to the, um, of course, since I'm in the cephalic area, I'm interested to show you on, on this side of the simulator, he had uh, an IV axis, a temporal IV axis, so you can uh, really practice IV insertion on supertory. It is a consumable part, so you could use it as many as uh, 25 times and you could later on replace it. It also, you can prime it, uh, you can add the simulated blood here so you get a good reflux uh, when, when you insert the uh, needle. Okay, so I think this is also a very nice feature for uh, skill training. Um, uh, then I move to the airway, I have the throat sound, so I can have a grunting, soft, strong, or strider. So I will trigger now a strong grunting. Okay, strider. It's synchronized, as you see, it's synchronized with the with the breathing. So it's not random. Okay, then the crying, of course, <laughs> something, uh, it's important for upper sport, but it brings up bad memories for those who had really uh, night <laughs> staying babies. Okay, also the cry is synchronized with the mouth movement, with the eye, with the limbs movement, so it is really high in fidelity. Just turn him off so we could talk and we could listen to each other. So now, um, also now I move to the breathing and this is where most of the technology is, which is the lung simulation. Okay, so uh, what's inside here is like so many components that are top technology components uh, and those components will simulate uh, the lung functions. I'll show you how. So you can, as you see, you have now a bilateral chest rise, but you could disable one of the lungs, okay? Let's say if you disable the uh, left lung and apply, so now you will have a unilateral chest rise, okay? So it's only on the right side, as you can see. So now, if you see on my fingers, it is only on one side. This could be uh, one of the scenarios where you can uh, trigger uh, the student to think about a pneumothorax or a hemothorax. In both ways, uh, the student will be able to insert uh, a chest tube here. So that's why on, on, on both sides, right and left, we have uh, the possibility of uh, uh, inserting a chest tube, and it is also a consumable part from Supertory. So uh, this piece here can be filled uh, with the blood. You can inject blood in it, and then you can do the cutting. I know you can't feel it, but there are also ribs here, so uh, intercostal spaces can be palpated, palpated, and then you can choose to dissect and uh, insert the tube. Okay, so this is also um, a very important skill trainer included in this simulator. So um, now I will turn it off, and now I will regain the bilateral chest runs. Now we move to the uh, lung compliance. Okay, lung compliance is about uh, the uh, elasticity, okay, uh, of the lungs. Uh, so whenever we have diseases like fibrotic diseases or nowadays like the COVID, uh, the people or the lung tissues lose compliance. It becomes stiff and very difficult to uh, ventilate. Therefore, the ventilator will be set on, on higher pressures and uh, this could be uh, harmful to the patient. So you need to put some pressure uh, levels, uh, upper levels, and then uh, try to um, ventilate with a higher frequency. And thus, uh, this is where our simulator, when you have really low compliance, fibrotic disease, or for whatever causes that, whatever pathologies that gets us to lower uh, compliance, uh, uh, we can go with this simulator, you can go high frequency mechanical ventilation. 
it is designed to withstand it. And uh, of course, uh, we're using your real devices, whether you're on Traeger or Hamilton or whatever ventilator, you can use it uh, with high frequency mode. Uh, so you can decrease the compliance one zero with with zero lungs will be so stiff and the ventilator will witness a very high resistance uh, and very high pressure. Okay, the same goes for uh, lung resistance or what we call airway resistance. So uh, the nice thing here is that you can control uh, the airway resistance and air entry to the lungs uh, independently, right and left. So if you want me to increase the resistance on the on the right side of uh, the uh, uh, simulator, so you will have diminished air entry on the right lung. So if you auscultate here, you will have a low, uh, diminished air entry and you will have a paradoxical chest rise. So if you can see, I, I'm not sure you can see it well, but you have a chest rise on the left side uh, going faster than uh, the right side. Okay. So this is how you can control. Of course, when you trigger the resistance, you also uh, see that there is an increased pressure on the uh, ventilator. Okay, long CO2 here, I, when I told you about uh, being able to uh, exhale real CO2 from the mouth, uh, so, of course, this is where you control it. So you can increase the lung CO2 from zero to nine. So each increment is for 10. So if you want like a normal uh, ATCO2 value, you put on four and apply, and then you will get on your capnometer, you will get the value of 40. Uh, you could go less or more, of course. Respiratory pattern. So you can have normal apnea, periodic breathing. So this is also to simulate um, all these uh, patterns of normal patterns. Ventilator options. So this is where I want to spend a little bit of time on. This simulator is not only um, like a empty bags uh, that you, you just inject air in and out. And it's not only valves that control the air entry with the features I showed you before, but this simulator also contains a negative pressure pump. Okay. So when, when you select to anesthetize your patient, uh, and the, the guy, of course, uh, has muscle relaxation, sedation. So spontaneous breathing stops. Okay, so uh, then you move to uh, the, uh, uh, the inspiratory effort. And then your patient is completely paralyzed. He cannot breathe. Of course, I'm, I'm not simulating this. Okay, when you put the inspiratory effort, you have to select the respiratory rate. Of course, you could go to zero here, so your your baby is now not uh, uh, breathing, and uh, of course, with this, uh, you have to ventilate the baby with a mechanical ventilation. Okay, so but when you want to go to the weaning part of the anesthesia process, or uh, when when you want your patient to wake up, the surgery is over, uh, and uh, you start the weaning, and weaning is a really difficult and critical process. So then you click on inspiratory effort, then the negative pressure pump in the simulator will, will start working and will, will start triggering the ventilator with real negative pressure. So then the ventilator would know that there are spontaneous breaths and the ventilator will, will, will show you how many, how many breaths. You can start with 8, 10, 20, as, as high as you want, and you can change this during the weaning process and increase the uh, spontaneous and inspiratory effort that uh, the baby will start, uh, let's say, uh, having his own shallow breathing. Inspiratory effort is just the pump will be triggering a little bit of negative pressure. Uh, but then, of course, when you want to complete the weaning process, the baby is awake, you can have him move the eyes, move the hands, and then you go to resist ventilator when you, when you select the resist ventilator, then there would be a pressure pump. Then the negative pump, the negative pressure pump will be working with the positive pressure pump in the lungs. It's like the diaphragm now starts to work and it starts really fighting uh, the ventilator and you will start seeing the uh, oscillations uh, on the uh, uh, ventilator, uh, whether on the volume or on the pressure. And then, you know, it's a good time to uh, extubate the baby. Okay. So, uh, of course, we could control the inspiration uh, percentage, I over E, inspiration over expiration. You can control the oxygen saturation. 
uh, both pre-ductal and post-ductal. As I said, you can measure the SpO2 on, on two levels on this simulator. Uh, the ETCO2, this is the value that would show on the uh, mechanical, or, or sorry, on the um, screen uh, of the patient monitor. Retractions, this is important because uh, sometimes you have uh, the babies in distress can do some abdominal retractions. Uh, so we can do mild, severe, severe with air hunger or diaphragmatic hernia. So if I click on apply now, you could start seeing, look at this, the, the abdomen is retracting. Okay, see at the retractions, look at the retractions. And of course, at the mouth level here, you have air hunger. So the mouth is open and the baby is really trying hard to get the air into his, his lungs. And you can see they're synchronized. Okay, so um, both movements are synchronized with uh, the breathing. Okay, so also you have the classical um, uh, uh, lung sounds. So you can go to the uh, library and you can choose strider, um, normal grunting, wheezing, crackles, and you can control the intensity of uh, you know the volume. Um, you can do that on the right and on the left lung independently. Okay. Done with the lung features. Uh, this is really where most of the money is. So this is super Tory. If you don't need the lung simulation features, you're only for life support exercises. Uh, you do cardiac life support, a neonatal uh, resuscitation program. You, you're not into an ICU. You're not on, in, into mechanical ventilation or patient transportation. Your choice would be Tory. Okay, so this is super Tory. We have Tori, which is exactly the same baby, but without the lung simulator built in. And like this would really save you a lot of money. Sometimes it goes half, half the cost. Okay, so this is very important. I needed to show the difference between our Tori, which is designed for life support, and our super Tori, which is designed for critical care. Okay, so now we go to move to the cardiac features, as I said. You can uh, connect a six lead ECG here, and you can also connect a um, defibrillator. You can do kind, all kinds of electrotherapy. So you just go with the cardiac rhythm, and you can select an ECG. We have an extensive library of ECG. So from branch blocks, asystole defibrillations, uh, ischemias, um, uh, like sinus, uh, VTACs, VFIBs. Uh, ventricular fl flutters, pacemakers, so you, you can choose one of those ECGs and apply it to the simulator and then the real uh, mechanic, uh, the real ECG will reflect whatever you have selected. Okay, so um, then you can control the heart rate, of course, and then the heart sounds. We have a library of heart sounds, uh, like it's, it's, uh, it correlates to the newborn pathologies. We have atrial septal, ventricular septal, S4 gallop, systolic ejection murmur, regurgitation murmur, congenital aortic stenosis, innocent systolic murmur, pulmonary hypertension, and patent ductus arteriosus. So you can select one of those, and using a real stethoscope, you would be able to auscultate the baby. Okay, so now with the heart features, now we go to the circulation features, of course, the blood pressure uh, from the leg and from the arm. So you could have two different blood pressure measurements using real devices. The crop of sounds, so in case you are using uh, manual uh, sphygmomanometers with, uh, and you, you ask your students to listen to the crop of sounds, uh, these are also available. Pulses, so this baby has fontanel pulses, has brachial pulses, has umbilical pulses. Unfortunately, I don't have my umbilicus here, but also uh, the pulse is, is there when you uh, touch the umbilicus. You could also categorize the umbilical uh, cord, uh, venous or arterial. And of course, he has uh, the, the, the femoral uh, pulses. Okay, uh, so, but here you can have the option of um, like deactivating the right or the left uh, radial pulse. Okay, so it's your choice. You can do it in case you want to simulate some uh, uh, cases. Temperature, of course, you can select uh, any temperature, temperature you want, and this will reflect on the virtual monitor only. 
blood glucose, of course, this is um, something you can also reflect on uh, the uh, simulator, uh, virtual monitor, but also we have uh, blood solutions uh, from GOMAR that uh, you can be filled uh, in, the, um, in the leg or uh, whatever you have uh, access to some blood. And this will give you like glycemia level. And capillary refill time, this is an interesting feature. So if you look at the leg here, only at the uh, at the left leg. So uh, if you look at my camera here, so you could press here and then remove your hand and then the light will fade away. It's actually a LED light, but it's sensitive to pressure. So I can control the capillary refill time. So I can push, so I, if I'm a doctor evaluating the, um, the, the volume of the baby, when I am one, two, and it's gone. But I can extend the capillary refill time to simulate um, like a, a bad condition. And then of course, the, the time will be longer. Uh, then of course I will press here. The light will go on as you see, but also will fade away very slowly. It will take six minutes, uh, six seconds to fade away. Okay, so this is the capillary refill feature and it's very important in physical examination and some people use it uh, besides the upgrade scoring, they also use it uh, to uh, assess the newborn. Okay, abdominal distension, of course, I can, I, I, now I'm in the abdomen, I can turn on the abdominal distension, apply now, and then you have, as you see now, the abdomen is, is, has distended. Okay, and then of course, now it's back to normal. And then you have the bowel sounds, so you can choose normal hyperactive bowel sounds and apply it with volume control. Okay, so um, this is uh, like an overview about uh, the, the features. I could also tell you a few things that those arms here uh, or hands are replaceable and they have a built-in venous system. So you can prime them with uh, simulated blood. You can uh, practice uh, IV um, uh, like insertion. Uh, you have also here the interchangeable uh, uh, genitalia uh, where we can, we, you can also practice urinary catheterization. Uh, this is also an intraosseous here. So this is an insert, an intraosseous insert, where you can uh, replace it. It's, um, it's really cheap and you can fill it with blood also and insert it. So whenever you drill to have an intraosseous uh, access, uh, it, it really uh, gives you uh, blood. Okay, so um, this is our super Tory uh, as an overview. I would like to continue with uh, the only two software uh, and uh, the features you can do. So let's say I have a clinical picture with all of these parameters. I've selected these parameters. So if I want to save those in, in a palette or in a scenario, so I just have to click on save here, palette name, uh, test uh, to let's say description demo. Okay, I can uh, click on uh, the color code. So because this is like a healthy uh, parameters and click on save. So the vitals have been saved. So now I can uh, it's saved in my palette list here. So I have the test two here as you see. And uh, so I could name it differently. Of course, I could design up guard score palettes. So I don't have every time to go and select, you know, uh, or change the vital sign. So this is my personal list, but you could still create your own. Okay, you can just apply those parameters. Click on apply now. Those parameters will be applied uh, either immediately or you can apply them in a later time, in 10 to 20 seconds. So you can give you your uh, give your students some time to uh, identify the changes. Okay, so um, this is uh, also you can do it for minutes, seconds. So it depends on how long is your scenario, and you could uh, play around with this. Okay, so the the scenario making and saving on this uh, on this platform only two is really nice. It's really user friendly. It saves you lots of time when you have repeated sessions and when you want to standardize. Uh, your training sessions. Okay, I will move to the CPR uh, uh, menu now. So, of course, so as you see, I'm, I'm pressing on the chest. Um, the uh, simulator will give me, uh, you know, um, I, I prefer to go with, uh, you know, an asystole. 
so I, I don't harm the simulator. So it's a um, CPU audible rhythm. Uh, it's just three here and apply. So the simulator now is uh, not moving and now the uh, situation requires CPR. So what I can do now is uh, start the CPR evaluation session here. And now see you have the no flow time. So you don't need actually a, a, a timer. Uh, to, uh, to just count how many seconds of no flow uh, the student is having. So the timer is including the stopwatch is included. So when I start the compression, see the no flow timer stops. And now the simulator is detecting my compressions, depth and release, and of course my rate. So if you can see the rate, now I'm on the, on the right rate. And now below, you can see on the two below squares, you could see uh, the ventilations, okay? How many uh, ventilations I'm uh, doing. Uh, also, um, the depth of the, or the pressure or volume of the ventilation with the duration of the ventilation, which are both important, okay? So also there is the counter for um, uh, the ratio. Uh, so compression to ventilation ratio. And of course, you have a metronome, so you can trigger a metronome. Okay, or you can reset. So the next thing here is when I click on stop, automatically a report is generated, which would show me cycle by cycle and an overall cycle here, every cycle, how many, uh, how many uh, under target, in target, or over target uh, uh, performance I did. Uh, the uh, average compression rate, the average compression depth, of course, full recoil, how many times I did it. So uh, my compressions look perfect somehow, but I'm in the ventilation because I didn't do perform any ventilation. I just had the um, uh, zero on my ventilation score. Okay, so this is a great tool to monitor the quality of CPR, which is now uh, with every accreditation uh, authority whether being European or American Heart Association or uh, Saudi Heart Association, every uh, association now is uh, imposing a great importance on CPR quality. And that's why it's a great tool here with SuperTory to evaluate the ventilation. I move on to the hypoxia model. So this is 100% related to, to a baby with respiratory distress. So this would show you uh, the efficacy of the ventilations uh, not being uh, under target and not being over target because we, it's, it's not only the under target that uh, harms the baby and uh, just leads to reduced uh, oxygen delivery, but also the over pressure, over volume by the ambubar also can trigger pneumothorax or sometimes hemothorax, and this is something even worse than hypoxia. So that's why this tool here enables your users to uh, practice perfectly the amount of pressure and the amount of uh, volume they need to give uh, through the ambubat uh, to their uh, patient. Okay, and this is like a game here. So when you click on start, the baby will be cyanotic. Uh, and um, uh, like uh, the baby will have normal skin, but if you don't ventilate, the baby will become cyanotic and his movement will be reduced. Okay, so with, with the better ventilation, you have uh, uh, like you can maintain uh, this line here. You see, so the cyanosis level, the uh, the line is filling up here in the middle of the screen. So if you do it well, this line will go back to blank. To the, to the left side, and then this means that you have a good uh, ventilation delivery. Okay, so uh, this is also a very nice tool for for the ventilation. It also monitors the rate, uh, the, the the and the uh, the pressure you give. You really cannot exceed the pressure. The target here is set to 22 centimeters uh, of water, and uh, you know, and, and one uh, the frequency is set to 30 ventilations per minute, which is one ventilation every two seconds. You can change all the these in case the parameters change, and uh, of course, uh, put your own uh, targets. Okay, last but not least is the scenario. So, our simulator comes already with 10 preset scenarios that you can choose from, but you could still, and this is highly advisable, 
to uh, build up your own scenarios. This is very important. So many scenarios done by neonatal professionals, and this is uh, really of great value to uh, trainers. It, uh, our super story also comes with simulation learning experiences, SLEs. So with these uh, uh, curricula, I mean, or scenarios, you really have something in hand to start with. Um, education, your, your education via simulation, and this is very important, and you can build on that. So it's it's a methodology uh, set by world renowned accreditation authorities, and uh, it's widely used. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm done with my uh, presentation. If you have any questions, I'm ready to listen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Yes, we Hello. can hear you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Okay, if you have no questions, I would uh, thank you so much for attending and uh, hope to see you in your institutions after the COVID situation is it down. I would love to bring my super tour on me and uh, uh, have a full demo about it with using it, using your own uh, medical devices. That would be uh, the, the optimum way of demonstrating super tour with hands-on. Thank you so much, have a great day.